Huh? I just shared a, a, a notification that I'll be doing a program, and I put Stone Boy's song. Huh? Then the susu on me, oh, then the susu on you too, oh. I put it. Somebody say, oh, look, you are coming to do Islamic problem program. You are you are playing dancehall. You see a fool. The mushriks, they are so enslaved in the head that their scholars make them think. Huh? I just shared a, a, a notification that I'll be doing a program, and I put Stone Boy's song. Huh? Then the susu on me, oh. Then the susu on you too, oh. I put it. Somebody say, oh, look, you are coming to do Islamic problem program. You are you are playing dancehall. You see a fool. The mushriks, they are so enslaved in the head that their scholars make them think. Huh? <clears throat> Salam alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Please be a part of all. Yeah. Uh, Salam, Umar Abalambo. Yes. <laughs> my old, my old, old, long time classmate, um, schoolmate. Uh, yeah, guys, forget about the mushriks on the platform. Any mushrik, you understand, any mentally enslaved mushrik who worships the, you know, uh, the Hadith books, forget them. Let them keep writing the bullshit. They are, they are, <laughs> I know they are bleeding. They are frustrated. And this is why they can't stop watching me. They have to comment on my platform. They have to say some bullshit. I don't, I don't even know they exist. So allow them, let them write their bullshit. It didn't start from me. Even the Prophet Muhammad himself had people call him madman, crazy. They insulted him. So how much less me? You understand? Uh -huh. If he is the Prophet and he has been insulted, called madman, crazy, uh, whatever have you. Is it me they will call crazy that I'll be crying? No, no. I'm not, I'm not disturbed about that. So let them keep uh, giving me the publicity, actually. Actually, they are actually... They are the ones making me famous. I didn't ask for the fame, but they are making me famous. So thank you for the, you know, the, <laughs> the mushriks being my fans. <laughs> I know they are bleeding, but it's no problem. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for coming today. We are going to discuss men the mental slavery, right? Now, uh, with the issue of mental slavery, before, before I go to that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the the Quran I translated, uh, the Great Quran, and uh, and they refer to the Quran. I've been working on one or two things that anybody you know who is good at creating apps, right? App software app in order to have it on uh, uh, Play Store, Google, or iPhone. Please kindly let the person contact me, inbox me. Uh, let's have a discussion how to get it on the on the app because I have a lot of people demanding that they would love to have it on an app where they can download and have the easy access, right? Uh -huh. So please, anybody who is good in making apps, softwares, kindly inbox me, contact me. Let's have a discussion and see where we can take this to the next step, right? Uh -huh. And also for, for the uh, Hope, Hope Nima uh, you know, Foundation, the charity, uh, we, are, we are going to start the feeding this, this week. Right. Hopefully, by the before the end of this week, we are starting that. Uh, for the, so those who have donated, donated, God bless you. I appreciate that. For those who haven't yet, please kindly help the movement, support the movement. So, with the first batch after the the, the distribution, the first batch, the pictures, everything will be put on uh, on GoFundMe page. You will see it as it's it's ongoing. Right. We've done it before. This is not the first time we've done it. This is about the fourth or fifth time. So kindly help the movement and let's let's do the necessary work. Actually, one of the, the strategies I'm using or one of the secrets is that we shouldn't let let the old people feel like they've been left out, like we've, they've been forgotten. And also, I'm trying my best to pull people's attention to, to God's work, because the more we keep feeding those people, they will love to know who are those in charge and who are responsible for feeding them and it will call out their attention to the goodness and which is the Quran, the word of God. Then we can caution those old people before they leave us. We can caution them that, hey, you've been lied to, you've been manipulated for all these years. They mentally enslave you to be following garbage books out there. 
right? So come to the salvation, come and understand what God is telling you. Have the iman, the faith to work on your, you know, you know, righteousness and then get the kingdom of God. That's it. But if you are just going to neglect the old people and always only think about the young ones and say, oh, let's forget about the old ones and think about. No, it's a wrong way to think. Right. Everybody's life counts. Everybody's important. Right. So let's focus on that. Uh, so. Uh, Thank you all once again for coming. Salam, uh, 50 Maldives. Uh, salam, uh, Amjad Rabbani. Salam, DJ Benaps. And for those on TikTok, salam to you all. Uh, uh, we have the King of Truth, the, the Twain, Gemini, and, and whoever joins later. Salam to you all. Peace be upon you all. Yeah. Uh huh. So today's topic, we are going to talk about mental slavery, right? <clears throat> uh Amjad Rabbani says uh, discussion about Eid Eid prayer. Will you do discussion someday? Uh the Eid there is in the Quran there's nothing called Eid Salat or Eid prayer. It, it doesn't exist, right? The only Eid mentioned in the Quran has to do with Isa alayhi salam. Quran chapter 5, verse 112 to 114. And it was only the Eid for his people, he and his disciples, when he supplicated to God to give them the Ma'ida, where they can enjoy. And it is not for any other generation. Actually, we are following the creed of Abraham, Millata Ibrahima. And God never gave us any Eid in the middle of Ibrahima. So for any Eid prayer, any stop wasting your time, it's like doing a job, a work that your boss has never instructed you to do. Who do you expect to be pay, to pay you your salary? You'll be a fool to be doing things God, the boss never asked you to do. Because who is going to pay you? You understand? Uh -huh. So, Salam Muhammad Jr. Butler, Salam Ibrahim Adla, uh, Muhammad Awal Abu Bakr, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, please share, kindly share, share before I start. And hopefully today I will not be keeping long. So it will be, like, let's say, maybe one hour program because I've already wasted enough time. Uh, so let's let's move on. But I was be lahi min ash-shaitan rajim. I was be Rabbi I was be ke min al-mazat al-shayatin wa was be ke Rabbi an yadurun. We go I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. Wa masanu kawlan min man da'a ila Allah wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al-muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims? This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah, for I am not among the idolaters. That's the Mushriks. And they know themselves, like the Sunnis, the Shias, the Tariqat Tijaniya, the Ahmadiyya, the Salafiyya, Wahhabiyya, Sufiya, all of them are Mushriks. Whether they like it or not, they should face me. I'll prove it to them. They are mushriks. People who will tell you you can't practice Islam without the garbage books some you know people have written for them, they are all mushriks. Uh, the truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Ya you lazina amanu taqullah wa kunu ma Oh, you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are honest. That is those who are truthful, right? <clears throat> yeah, the verses I'm using in the intro, you can find it in Quran chapter 41, verse 33, and Quran chapter 12, verse 108, and then Quran chapter 18, verse 29, and then Quran chapter 9, verse 119, right? Surah to Tawbah. So I share them. They are all pertaining to the Quran. They are not outside the Quran. They are all found in the Quran, right? Mm -hmm. Now, so we are going to talk about mental slavery. Now, when I mention mental slavery, the first thing that should come to your mind is slavery before the mental comes. Because when I mention mental slavery, the concept here I'm letting you understand is this is not about physicality. This is not about physically being enslaved. It's about being, being enslaved by, you know, statements, by word, by, you know, doctrines, indoctrination. Uh, that's what we call mental slavery. They enslave you to the, to the essence that you have to change your style of dressing. They enslave you to the essence that you have to change your names uh, to put, uh, uh, you know, they tell you this is a Christian name. They tell you this is an Islamic name. That's a lie. Uh, they will enslave you for you to even abandon the food you are eating 
in order to tell you, no, your food is garbage, come and eat this. They will enslave you to make you think the music you are listening to is haram. So no, stop listening to that. Come and listen to this. They will enslave you to make you think even changing your own color as a black person to bleach and become a white skin, that is the best for you. They will enslave you to make you circumcise your daughters and your boys to make you think that is a norm that you have to do. That is mental enslavement. And it, the worst part is that when it comes to uh, uh, Christianity, they make people think in a white man's perspective. When it comes to Islam, the, the man-made Islam, I'm not talking about Islam from God, we are talking about the man-made Islam, they make you think if you don't try your best to become an Arab, you are out of Islam. So so have you with other religions, right? Uh -huh. So when I chose the topic mental slavery, it is just to eradicate the misconceptions we have surrounding us, right? You see somebody, he's called, maybe your, his name is Johannes, right? Johannes. And then he says, oh, dude, uh, I was born a Christian. My name is Johannes. I just want to become a Muslim. Do you have any Islamic name for me? Okay, from now on, your name is Muhammad. No, that's wrong. <laughs> Ask yourself, Prophet Muhammad, he already had the name Muhammad before he became a prophet. Does he have to change? Because the Muhammad is an Arabic name, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So a name has nothing to do with your faith. Your name... Look, if you go to the shop, you buy an item, you give it a name. You buy a dog, you give it a name. You buy a, whatever, a pet, give it a name, right? Because you own it. Your parent owns you. So that's why they give you the name they have given you. Unless if you do, you are feeling uncomfortable that the name is a bad name. Fine. Salam. Uh, uh, Rowan Azizi. <coughs> Unless if you have a feeling that the name has a bad meaning or it's a corrupted name or it's evil. Fine. Then you decide when you grow up because changing a name you're bound to change it if you want, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So when I chose the topic mental slavery, it is the, the the way people have been enslaved in the mind to make them think in a certain perspective, right? And they cannot think any otherwise, but they have to think in this perspective that they have been enslaved to think, which is why I said mental slavery. So in order to eradicate this kind of con uh, you know concept, you have to unlearn what you have been taught and relearn. But when you are relearning, you start with questioning. Like for people who are based in the Western world, you know how it is raising up kids. You know how your kids will ask you questions, right? If your kids see you praying, he will ask you, uh, Daddy, what are you doing? What is this? Oh, I'm praying to God. Is that how God asked you to pray? Yeah, yeah. Okay, show the kid, right? Don't just say yeah and leave them hanging. <laughs> just like how you have been mentally enslaved. You understand? Uh, salam, motivative saying. You, yeah, salam, Sharif Karim. You're welcome. Uh, you understand? So, <clears throat> when 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 we say mental slavery, for people who have uh, listened to Bob Marley's song, uh, uh, redemption song, uh, you have to emancipate yourself from mental slavery, meaning to free yourself, to liberate yourselves from mental slavery. Don't just hold yourself uh, hostage in somebody's perspective, in somebody's way of thinking, in somebody's way, way of life. No, don't do that. You have a freedom of choice to make, right? So far as it doesn't go against your maker, listen carefully. So far as your freedom of choice doesn't go against your maker, then you are free to choose. Don't let anybody mentally enslave you by making decisions for you. So sometimes what baffles me is when I found people, countries calling themselves independent countries, and yet they are not independent. They are mentally enslaved. You understand? Their culture has to be, you know, changed because the, in a certain perspective, to tell them this is wrong, this is this is wrong. You don't do this. You are, you know, we are not part of human beings. You don't do this. No, no. When we say mental slavery. <coughs> What I want people to understand is, especially, especially when it comes to black people, when it comes to Africans, what I want you to understand it, it is not that black people don't want to hear the truth. That is not it, right? However, I'm talking as a black man, right? Somebody will say, oh, is it relevant to mention color? Yes, that God, the God who created us, created us in different color. There's a reason. 
everything God does. Rabbana ma khalaqta haza batila. Do you understand? Rabbana ma khalaqta haza batila. God never creates anything in vain. There's always a reason. Check the beds around you. Are they the same colors? Check the ants around you. Are they the same colors? Check the cats. Are they the same colors? Check the dogs. Are they the same colors? Do you think it's in vain? Rabbana ma khalaqta haza batila subhanaka fakina. Right? Azab nar Now, the, what you have to understand is when God is creating something, he puts a reason behind it. Now, the reason you have to strive to understand what the reason behind it is. Some things are left unsent while some things are explained to you. For instance, when I give birth to my kids, right, I don't need to explain to my kids how I slept with their mom. <laughs> Even if they ask me, I don't need to explain that. It's a question, right? But it doesn't need to be explained at that given hour. They will come to know when they grow up. But there are questions your kids will ask you, you need to answer them. You don't have to leave it unanswered. So similarly, the God who created you, there are certain things he has to explain to you. He doesn't want you to be extra wasting your time somewhere else. So he has given you the answers to it. Whatever you see God hasn't answered you or told you about is irrelevant to your guidance. If you know what, okay, let's let's assume. I want to know the language Adam spoke to God about with or the first language the human being ever sp spoke. I want to know. Okay, if I know, how does it benefit my faith? Will that lead me to go to Jannah? How? How does it benefit right now that I'm sitting here? How? Oh, the, the universe was created about one billion years ago. The moment you use the word about is an assumption. Did God tell you that? No. How did you know? So you let a scientist tell you about so which means the scientist himself has to use the form of belief because he believe, meaning he's not sure. So he's, he's believing that the world could be about one billion years old. Do you see where I'm heading this to? I'm taking this to a direction whereby if it is left unsaid, leave it unsaid because it has no relevance to the guidance. So coming back to the point. It is not as if that black people don't want to hear the truth. I want you to understand because I'm a black person. How come I was able to listen to the truth and I'm dealing with it? So it is not as if that black people don't want to hear the truth or many, any other race don't want to hear the truth. But let me tell you why. Some just don't want to accept it huh? from someone who looks like them. That is the obvious cause. That is why even Prophet Muhammad, his people rejected him. Quran chapter 6 verse 66. His people rejected the Quran. And on the day of judgment, he will come to God. He will come to God and tell God, my people have taken this Quran as abandoned. So you might think, oh, it's only my race who don't like the truth. No, it's not a thief. My race don't like the truth. It's not as if your race don't like the truth. But there's a reason, and I'm coming to that. So it is not that black people don't want to hear the truth. Some just don't want to accept it from someone that looks like them. And according to the rule of God, he has to always send a messenger who looks like you, part of you, your color, your race. Why do you expect him to send somebody from a different race? Have you ever seen the way ants work together? The same color ants, they work together. One ant has to go out, see something, and go and call the other group. You don't expect red ants to go and see something and go and call black ants. <laughs> no. The black ant, when he goes out to see food, he goes to call black ants, not red ants. Listen carefully. Because when this red ant goes to the black ant to call them, it will be strange for them. They will be like, oh, dude, why leave your people to come and call us to come and eat this food? Something is fishy here. But why is it that if he has to go and call his own people, they will look down on him? 
there's something wrong. Do you know what is wrong? Mental slavery. Which means the group has been taught to reject their own kind. That is what causes the problem. Why do you think Abraham's people questioned him when he asked them about the idols they were worshipping? Why do you think among his group, some people said, is it this young guy you are going to listen to? When, did, when was he born? When did he grow up? So it is not that black people don't want to hear the truth. Some just don't want to accept it from someone who looks like them. They have been conditioned for centuries to believe that the deceitful people who brutally colonized them and enslaved them are the authorities of all truths. So far as it is not coming from another black. That is the condition. So this is what we call mental slavery. And it's found everywhere. Among white people, there's mental slavery. Among Arabs, mental slavery. Among Chinese, mental slavery. Among black people, mental slavery. <clears throat> so don't think that if you have found the guidance from the Quran, huh, and you're talking to the people and they're looking at you like you're crazy, you're mad, <laughs> you're an outcast. Don't think it's a foreign thing. It happens to every race in this universe. Yes. Because the group you're talking to have been mentally enslaved. So it's a programming. So when they have been programmed, there is no truth going to come from their own member. No, they would rather take it from another place. Do you see the problem we are facing in the world? So if I say mental slavery, it has nothing to do with only blacks. No, it's everywhere and every house, every family, every denomination, wherever you go is there. But how come when we are dealing with animals, when we are watching animals, we don't see this inferiority happening? Right? I gave you the example of ants. In Arabic, we say namal. There's a reason why God mentioned namal. Quran chapter 27. You saw that when Solomon was coming with his soldiers, it was an ant, a female ant, who alerted the other group that they should be worse. Danger is ahead coming. So will they say, oh, come on, who are you to tell us the danger is coming? Who are you? Come on, leave us alone. They will die in vain. You see how it works. You're telling your own black people the truth, they hate you. An Arab telling his own Arab people the truth, they will hate him. A white man telling his own white kind the truth, they will hate him. Do you know why? Quran chapter 43, verse 78. We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. So it's always less of your own kind who appreciate what you're saying. The majority, pew, kaput in the head. I'm serious. That is why God told the prophet in Quran chapter 28, verse 56. Sorry. Innaka la tadi man hababta. You cannot guide those you love or you like, whomever you like or love. You can't. How can you? Because you are dealing with a person who doesn't use his rationale to listen to whatever message you have to say for him to critically think that it's not about you, it's not about your color, it's not about your, your level of, like, you know, it's about the message. Is it true? Fine, take it. You understand? What does it have to do with color? The other day I had some people some from some I don't just want to mention for, for, for point of people think it's a discrimination sake. I have people from somewhere who told me that could you imagine their own family member telling them, Are you listening to this black dude? Who is he to tell you what the Quran says? Like, seriously. Was I the one who brought the Quran to the universe? No. You have the Quran at your home. I have it too. So if I say something from the Quran, is it me you are going to hold accountable? No, check it from your side. I'm not forcing you to take what I'm saying. I say use your rationale. All I ask for is that. Scrutinize the word of God. That's why he says, If you like, believe. If you like, don't believe. Do I have to cry? No. 
sometimes for people who have kids, sometimes you'll be telling your kids something. They will be laughing at you. They don't believe you. Can you force them to believe you? How? You strangle them? How? And that is why people do honor killing in some of the parts of the world, especially in the Middle Eastern part. You're forcing your kids to do what you want. If God is going to force you to do what he wants, you think you have the freedom to even breathe? Hasbun Allah wa nima Yeah, salam Bilal. Uh, salam uh, Bilal Ar. You're welcome. Aha. Uh -huh. So, like I said, the reason why most uh, black people will hate the truth is because they just don't want to accept it that it's coming from their own kind. So they will hate you because one, I don't look like an Arab. So this is why when a devious different race who is devious will see the weakness you have, he will now have an agenda. He knows how to manipulate you. That is why the Jews have the Talmud. That is why the Arabs, they have what? Hadith. Because they know how to get you. They have to mentally enslave you. The educational systems you are using in Africa, we didn't invent that. They were given to us by the whites as well. Because they've seen your weakness. You would not rather take from your own kind. Right? I'm from Ghana. My people don't like the made in Ghana items. We don't like made in Ghana shirts. We don't like stuffs. This is why most of the time you see me making my program, I'm wearing a made in Ghana shirt. I do the design. You see the designs. My brother does it from Ghana and he sent it over to me. And I sell them online and I use them myself. Right? You have to love your own kind. Appreciate your own kind. God didn't make us nations and tribes in vain. He makes it so that we can recognize each other. There's a reason. That is why I use the animals for example. Because even in the Quran, God always used animals to give examples. Right? The zebras, they go with their own kind. The lions, they go with their own kind. Right? It doesn't mean they cannot help each other. Have you ever watched a National Geography? You will see an animal helping another animal. They do that. God didn't create us different to hate each other. No. But when you let another animal exploit your weakness, you become their food. And that is why we have carnivorous animals out there. A snake will be hunting for bird nest to eat. Crocodile will be hunting for fishes and other meats. The lion will be hunting for the deers and the antelopes and the whatever have you. The gazelle. Do you understand? Your weakness becomes somebody's advantage in life. So when I mention the notion of mental slavery, what I want you to pay attention is we have been mentally enslaved in the head to think in a certain perspective, which is not coming from the, your, your creator, your maker, your God. It's not coming. Now, why is it that when you mention Bani Israel, most of the people think we are talking about the Israel country located in the Middle Eastern zone. That country was only formed in the year 1948. It's called an Israeli state. It is not the Israel. Bani Israel, God is talking about in the Quran. But out of your foolishness, you make some scholars enslave you to make you think when it said Bani Israel, you think it's in the Middle East. That one is Bani Israel. Do you see the notion of mentally enslaved people? Huh? This is what I'm talking about. Because your perspective to, to everything has been changed. You don't know the source of your information. So when you start checking, you find that, oh, certain articles about whatever you believe in, if you look in deeper, that is not what it is. That is what is not originally what is, is, is been the, uh, 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 you know, the source. Do you get my point? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Tausif Ahmed he says blind following is called to is equal to mental slavery. Exactly on point, right? You blind follow something, you become mentally enslaved. So you can't liberate yourself if you don't start thinking outside the box. This is basically what I'm doing for you. I'm not asking you to pay me. No. I, I didn't ask anybody to come and pay me that hey anytime you want to watch me you have to pay me 20 euro before i lecture you no 
God gave me this knowledge for free. Imagine Moses going to seek for knowledge in Quran chapter 18, verse 65 to 82. Does he have to pay? Did he pay the servant of God? You and I are still benefiting from it from the Quran. I, I didn't ask you to pay me. I'm only helping you to think. It doesn't matter who takes my message, whether an Arab, whether an Asian person, whether a Chinese, whether uh, uh, an American. So far as we are human beings, humanity comes first. That's what bothers me. Because if the Quran has to do with a particular race, it will only say, Sharu Ramadan al-lazi unzila fi al-Quran hudan lil-Arab. God never says lil Arab. He says hudan lil nas. Mankind comes first. So forget about your race when we are talking about finding guidance. Right? Uh -huh. Because it will take another race to give you a helping hand to reach where you are. Life is all about supporting each other. Right? But don't sleep for somebody to mentally enslave you. It is your weakness your enemies will always use against you. That is how life works. So don't be don't be crying for the animals in the jungle when you see them killing each other and eating each other. It is someone's weakness that the other uh, scavenger or other carnivorous animal is surviving on. Your weakness becomes somebody's advantage in life. So God is only giving you the guidance to give you his help. Why do you think the devil is after our asses? It is your weakness he needs. If you are strong in your faith, what do you think the devil need you for? No. He need people who are weak to just capture them and take them away. You, you watch crocodiles, how they attack the zebras and the animals when they are crossing the sea and the, the rivers. Go and watch your documentary. I give you an assignment. They always look for the weaker ones. He doesn't want to struggle to go and catch stronger ones. No. They will look for the weaker ones. Why do you think the scholars will tell you don't listen to people like me? As if I'm asking you for money. <laughs> but they are asking you for money. You forgot? Last time I played a video for you, Asim Al-Hakim from Saudi Arabia, he charges $100 for 30 minutes of counseling. And they, gave you the, they give you the garbage uh, lessons from the Hadith books. And you pay to listen. Yeah? And you come here and say, I'm, I'm doing this for money. Do you know my life? <laughs> right? If I'm not self-sufficient, will I even be organizing charity for people to eat also? Do you, do you get my point? Do you get my point? I'm only here to wake up your ass, but you hate it because I look black like you. So you hate me. Really? <laughs> you understand? Your color doesn't make you inferior or superior. No, God never said that. The one who created you and I, he never said it in the Quran that if I created you white or I created this guy black, it means the black one is better. He says, Inna akramakum in the law atikakum. It's about piety, piousness, righteousness. That is what makes you honorable in front of God. It's not about your color. When, when did your creator say white man is better than black man? Or he says a, a black man is better than Arabian. Or an Arabian is better than a Chinese. Where? Where did God ever tell you? No. We are the ones formulating that from our own doctrines and books. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. We need each other because we have a goal. We have one enemy, which is the devil. God never says you are enemies to each other. He says you have an enemy. Your enemy is the devil. Inna shaitana lil insana aduwan mubina. Huh? The devil is a clear enemy to you, the insan, the human being. God never said you are enemy to another human being. Or never did he say the black man is an enemy to the white man. Or the white man is an enemy to the Arabian. No. We are the ones formulating these garbage narrations around us. Do you get my point? So when I say mentally enslaved or mental slavery, it is a, a misconception of thoughts, indoctrination we are, has been put in our heads to make us hate our own kind. You understand? I appreciate that, yeah, Sister Munira to Muhammad. You understand? We have been taught to hate ourselves. And this is why, excuse me to say, some of our sisters, black sisters, cannot stand their own natural gifted color. 
the melanin they have they have to bleach it off do you know how much white women are begging to be like you <laughs> wallahi lazim why do you think white people go to tan their body in that sun in the seat in the sun for hours just to look a bit darker like you subhanallah do you do you get the perspective i'm giving you the mental slavery aspect look arabs have their own type of music africans have their own type of music americans have their own type of europeans have look everybody can listen so far as it is not a nonsensical music quran chapter 23 verse 3 what did god ask the believers to do you have to avoid nonsense huh you just have to turn away from what is nonsense yeah so sometimes i'll be playing music and you see somebody asking me oh uh, shake hey is, is it you listen to music what do you want me to listen to i don't get it what what do you want me to listen to arab music is arab music part of islam what, what music do you want me to listen you listen to a music which has sense, conscious, not nonsensical music. If any music you have, whether it's an African music, so far as it's nonsensical, put it to the garbage. Take songs that speak to your soul, that has message, so that when your kids are even listening to, they are listening to wisdom. That's how it goes. It's a message. Don't let any foolish person tell you music is haram. Ask him to open the Quran and show you where it says music is haram. You'll be looking at your faces like that. Who makes the law? The last time I checked, Quran chapter 6, verse 114. Shall I seek a judge other than God? Why is the one who has revealed to you the book explained in detail? Quran chapter 6, verse 114. Who has revealed to you the book explained in detail? So should I seek a judge, somebody somewhere to judge my life and tell me, oh, you cannot be a Muslim because you are not wearing El Jalibab. You, you don't have the our Jalibab. You have to leave the beard like a sunnah, sunnah like the way the prophet Muhammad did. When did I become a monkey? To be copying somebody's style like that. Hello? You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So we have a uh, 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 sugar girl. I'll be talking about, answer, I'll be giving answers to questions very soon. Uh, it's now 45 minutes in my program, right? I'm just coming to a point where people can understand the concept of the program I'm doing. Then I can start answering questions. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, somebody says, what the breeding will be? Will be haram. <laughs> it's obvious, eh? Uh -huh. So what I'm, what I'm, the point I'm giving you guys is, when you take certain concepts we have been told, for instance, you have this, this weird books telling you that Prophet Muhammad is the best of creation. Look, the Quran, when you take Fatiha to Anas, nowhere does it say Muhammad is the best of creation. What do you think that this book is propagating here? Telling you an Arabian is the best of creation. Why does it say that in the Quran? Do you know what they are trying to cause with that? Do you know? Why do you think they made a Jesus the white man? Do you know what they are causing with that? That's mental slavery. I'm serious. You don't know? Why do you think you see people bowing down to the white statue there? Hello? I'm giving you a heads up. That's mental slavery. You haven't checked it? ha <laughs> ha. <clears throat> excuse me i think i have uh one uh picture here if i remember i don't know if i saved it somewhere but i'm trying to find it i saw i think i sent it on my tiktok video right there was one pastor i forgot his name he was pointing at the white uh jesus on a, on a poster and he was hitting it and said this is not jesus that's not jesus you understand he i don't remember i don't remember please if somebody knows that video t just remind me the name of that pastor who was doing it. he's an Amer black american pastor who who did that right he was pointing he says that's not jesus he's a christian right 
That's not Jesus. He says this is an imposter. It's not Jesus. But you don't get how mental and slave uh, mental slavery works. Most of you don't don't get how this is being used. Do you, do you get the point? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. You are being mentally enslaved to think in a certain perspective which God hasn't given you. Look, as a black man, think like a black man. As a white woman, think like a white woman. As an Arabian, think like an Arabian. Do you know why? That's how animals do. You will not see a donkey trying to act like a snake. Neither will you see an ant trying to like act, act like a zebra. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> do you get my point? Muhammad was sent as a messenger to mankind to deliver the Quran alone. That is it. He wasn't come, he didn't come to any Ghanaian to come and preach to you or educate you about Islam. No. He was sent to mankind to bring the Quran. He has delivered it, he's gone. So mankind, we all have it. America has the Quran, China has it, Europe has it, Africa has it. Now it's your duties to now follow the book. The messenger's role is done. But you don't get it, right? They will tell you, come and follow some garbage books coming from the messenger. Ask them, does he have the signature of Muhammad on it? Right? Do you see third parties in the Quran that we have heard that uh, Muhammad, somebody was asking the prophet this and then this? Do you see such garbage narrations in the Quran? No, you don't see it. You only find it in the Hadith books. Does the Prophet know about the books they wrote behind him? He knows a book called Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Jami al Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, Sunan Ibn Nisa. Does he know all these garbages? Okay, what about your top scholars? Imam Maliki, Hanafi, uh, Shafi'i, Ambali. Does he know them? No. So they will tell you that Prophet Muhammad is the best of creation. That is number one lie. That is not coming from God. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Hamza Malik has just reminded me. He said, Pastor Gino, uh, uh, is it Jennings? Pastor Gino Jennings. Yes, that is the pastor. I think I had the video somewhere. I will have played it. I, I don't know if I saved it somewhere. I'm trying to remember in my head. Uh, God help me. God help me. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I have it. Yes, I found it. <laughs> I found a video. Let me play it. Uh, for those on Facebook, YouTube, and for those on TikTok, you just hear playing the video, right? So that most, maybe most of you know about the video, but then uh, you, I, I'm, I'm actually, I want to share the screen for it. That's why maybe, aha. Uh -huh. So pardon me if this is delaying a bit, but I found a video. I just want to play it so that people can hear what I was talking about. You, you, it, it, like, it's amazing what he did. And this is how I want people to eradicate mental uh, enslavement. Like you need to, you need to wipe it out, take it out from your perspective, the way you think. Start thinking for yourself, outside the box, not, now, not within the box. Right? This has no place, no place in God House. Amen. This is not Jesus. That's right. Did you hear what I just said? He ain't Jesus. No. And he sure ain't Jesus. That's right. That's not Jesus. Amen. Now, the Europeans took this. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm going to hit hard. Yeah. prophets yeah. took this mm -hmm. and made it look like them yeah. and then use scripture mm. servants obey your masters 
and taken that scripture, they manipulated and made themselves that master that the Bible was talking about. That's right. So if you want to talk about terrorism, Racism is terrorism. If you got me looking up to white people to think they are superior and look down at myself as a black man to teach me that I'm inferior, that is terrorism. Some of you are bowing in the name of the Father. In the name of the son. Yeah. In the name of whose son is this? Whose son is that? I, I mean, whose son is this Sarah? That's right. This is Baal's son. Baal's son. This is the devil's son. Yeah. This is the son of a liar. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You would say, oh, he called Jesus a liar. That's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. I said that's not Jesus. And that's not Jesus either. Go ahead. So get up off your knees. Stop making a cross. Right. Get up off your knees. That's, right. That's idolatry. That's idolatry. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, 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 Brother Abdul Hamza Malik, for making me remember this name. Uh, salam, Sayyid Adam. Uh -huh. Salam, hey, uh, Salis. <coughs> salam, Salam, Baba Sidi. Yeah, there yeah, no problem, bro. You can watch the whole program later. All right. Uh -huh. So now you all heard Pastor Gino uh, Jennings, uh, right? Jennings, right? Uh huh. And for those on TikTok, I hope you you heard him, right? Now, for people who don't have uh, the capability, uh, the rationale to think outside the box, they might think this pastor is blaspheming Jesus. That's not it. Now, because we have been conditioned to think that the truth cannot come from our own people, we always think the truth must come from another race, right? So people will be looking for a white man to actually say these things before the black people will actually believe. Still, they are they are part of the mentally enslaved, you know, zones, but they don't realize that. So it will take another of your kind to to enlighten you to wake. And this is why when God sends messenger, He has to send His to the same as their kind to them. You understand? Because He is with you. He understands what you what you live through. He eats the same food as you. He wears the same attire as you. He has your same color. So God has to use your, your own kind to convince you. But people don't get it. They think it has to be somebody superior from somewhere, an angelic figure. <laughs> you understand? So your enemy, I'm not saying all whites are your enemies, or neither is it all Arabs are your enemies. But the enemies within they will use this means to devise their means against you because it's your weakness your enemy is looking for. It's not your strength. It's your weakness your enemy will be looking for. You understand? You just imagine it vice versa. Paint the image of Jesus as black. And see, will you get some white people to bow down in front of it? The answer is no. <laughs> You understand the reason why because you can you have him you are not in the position to mentally enslave them no but why is it that some blacks have made themselves so weak to be mentally enslaved so what uh what pastor look 
this program I'm doing, somebody has just reported me that I'm violating something. Uh huh. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to understand is, you see, when it comes to mental enslavement, the mental slavery that we have been facing as Africans, I can speak as an African, I've been enslaved to think in a way the Arabs think, and I've been enslaved to think in the way the white man think. Our educational systems, I'm based in Europe, right? The educational system given to us in Africa is nowhere compared to what I see in the white man's land. They are not the same. Even though the one we are using is still formulated by the whites for us. Why don't you formulate your own educational systems? Do you get my point? You have been mentally enslaved to think in a certain perspective, which is not your own style. Can you ima imagine a zebra living his life like a lion? Now tell me which antelope will run away from him? Or which deer, reindeer or deer will run away from him? Which gazelle will run away from him? A zebra pretending to be a lion. You are not scary. Do you get what I mean? We are all created uniquely in our own way. We can help each other with the guidance of the race. But when you let other people exploit you with your weakness, that is the danger zone. You understand? Yeah, salam, uh, Brother Hamza. Uh, I appreciate the reminder. Yeah, thank you very much. Do you understand? So now they've, they've made Islam to think, to make people think that Islam is all about Arabic people. Arab, they Arabized it. You have to, you have to have a Sunni beer. You have to wear jalbab. You have to get your kids to wear hijab. Uh, this is foreign. This is not Islamic. Are you a fool? Did Islam start with Prophet Muhammad? Are you forgotten that Abraham was a Muslim? Moses was also submitted to God, a Muslim. Jesus was also submitted to God, a Muslim. What is a Muslim? It's an Arabic word. It means submitter. They all submitted to God. Do you, do you get the point? Aha. Uh -huh. So the Islam that God has given you is about submission to him. You submit to him. It has nothing to do with color, your background, your tribe, your race. No, Islam is not about that. It's submitting to God. I don't need to act like an Arab before I become a Muslim. Neither do you need to act like a white to become a Christian. Neither does an Arab has to act like an African to become a Muslim. No. It's all about having a connection to God. That is all what God asks us to do. You understand? So when you give the chance to let some Arabian books tell you that the best of creation is Prophet Muhammad, you are the number one biggest fool on earth to, uh, to agree to that. Number one, when you are giving best players to footballers, for instance, uh, 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 this player was awarded the European best player of the year. Uh, how do you call it? Karim Benzema, the French player. For those who watch football, he's been awarded by the Ballon d'Or, right? One of the biggest prizes in football. This is official. This wasn't uh, awarded by BBC or CNN or Fox News. No. So if Prophet Muhammad was the best of creation, who is the in the best position to tell you and I? Is it somebody else telling me or is it God who has to tell me? Because he created everyone. So God is in the best place to tell us that Prophet Muhammad is the best of creation. Yet ask the scholars to prove to you where God says that. It doesn't exist. You don't see it anywhere in the Quran, in the book of God. It's not there. Do you understand? They will go ahead to tell you the prophet Muhammad is the best of the prophets. Where, where did God also say that? People are still upholding these statements everywhere. They will tell you prophet Muhammad is the first creation of God. <laughs> that he was the first God created. Where? Where did God say all this rubbish? But you hear most of the mushriks upholding such belief. Now, your dress code. Quran chapter 7, verse 26 to 27. What God wants is libas at taqwa The clothing of piousness. You know what is piousness to you. When you are exposing yourself, you know. When you are on piousness, you know. Do you get my point? So, 
Piousness is not about wearing hijab. Hijab is not mentioned in the Quran that hijab, to cover the hair like this, it means hijab. It is a foreign doctrine. You'll be the weirdest creature on earth to think that the woman's hair will get you to sleep with her. The hair. So you'll find that ladies who dress nicely, they will wear the hijab to cover their hair, but then they are leaving the contours of their body. Do you see? They will leave their shape. You have covered your hair and leaving your attractive part for me to see. What is the Islam submission to God there with? What is, what is the taqwa? Where is the taqwa there? If a guy wants to molest you, is he targeting your hair or is he targeting your con the contours of your body? Is it the shape of your body he needs? He needs your body. He doesn't need your hair. So why will you rather out of foolishness cover your hair and leave in the contours of your body? Leave in the shape of your thighs, your hips, your backside, your, your breast. Why? Are you dumb? Can't you reason and think outside the box? Why do you allow people to mentally enslave you? Your style of dressing. God never asked you to cover the hair. Nowhere found in the Quran. Please, if there's any scholar out there says I'm misleading the people on this, find me. I'll pay you 1,000 euro free of charge. Just find me and prove me wrong. Wallahi, inbox me. I will arrange with you. Prove to me where God says a woman should cover the hair. Are you dumb? Did you see Adam and his wife? Did you see Eve covering her hair? Is that what God told you? That she covered her hair? Where? You let them lie to you. They'll say, oh, the devil will enter into your hair. Into it, you will enter. Okay, excuse me, ladies. When you, excuse me, excuse me. When you go to the toilet, do you cover every part of your body when you are in the toilet? So are you telling me the devil cannot go through the, the, the water closer to enter into your body? So he would rather go to your hair when you're outside. What kind of madness is this? <laughs> Look, dress codes. The only time God mentioned about women how to cover the contours of their body, their breasts, and then the shape of their body is mentioned in Quran chapter 24, verse 31. And then Quran chapter 33, verse 59. And the 33, verse 59 is only for the prophet and his wives and his daughters and then the wives of the believers. That is a long gown. The Jalibab. Yes. As for adornment, Quran chapter 7, verse 31, you can wear any adornment you want to go to the masjid. So far as it's a nice cloth. Remember, Quran chapter 7, verse 27, 26 to 27, Liba is a taqwa. The clothing of piousness is what you have to keep in your mind. Again, they will give you Arabic names. For instance, my father fell victim for this. My name is Shoaim. That is an Arabian name. Yes, we found it in the Quran, of course. That's why I'm still upholding it, because it's found in the Quran. But it is not an African name, that African, that I have that name. We have a lot of people who have that African name. Of course, Baba, if you call me Baba, Baba is an African name, right? That my father gave me also. But my official name, Shoaim, you found it in the Quran, fine. My grandfather gave to my father from the Quran and he named me by it, right? It's a nice name. It's from the Quran, thumbs up. But we have other names which are Arabian names, right? They are Arabic names. And what happens? We've, they've been given to other Africans whilst letting you leave your heritage aside leave your culture aside and taking foreign names again abraham ibrahim salam, he already had its name before he got guidance from god did he change it no evidence he's still abraham muhammad salam, he was he was already called muhammad before he got the quran he became a prophet did he change his name no Moses already had his name Moses before God called him as a prophet. Did he change his name? No. So where is the actually notion of changing names from? You wear an African necklace. The mushriks out there who have been mentally enslaved will tell you necklace is haram. This is an African bead. You wear it. 
They will tell you it's haram. Come and open the Quran and show me where it says haram. Come. I will pay you 1,000 euro. Also, another promise. Open the Quran and show me where it says this necklace is haram. For those who don't know, Quran chapter 35 verse 12. This is classified under jewelry. This is classified under ornament. This is classified under trinket. You can wear it and thank God for it. It is not haram. Do you understand? It is not haram. You'll be a fool to tell me go to the hadith to check where it says haram. Hadith is the book of God. That's the mental enslavement again. Now, food types. They will even tell you to stop eating the kind of food you are eating. Come to them and eat their, their food. Wow. I should leave my food to eat your food. And that will take me to paradise. Where did God say that? Where? Where? Again, music. I already spoke about music. They will tell you stop listening to music. It's haram. Where did God say that? Where? Mental slavery. You understand? Mm -hmm. They will go to the extent to tell you to circumcise your daughters and your boys. Where did God command that? Where in the Quran? Nowhere. So who is commanding you? You are being mentally enslaved by certain books not coming from God. You understand? So ladies and gentlemen, beware of our, your surroundings. Beware of what you are being taught. Beware what you teach your kids yourself. Because remember, you are a victim of mental slavery. You don't have to pass it on to your kids. Yes. Think twice. Wallahi lazim. You are being mentally enslaved to think in a certain perspective God never instructed you. So you have to unlearn and relearn whatever faith you belong to, whether you are a Christian, a Muslim, whatever you call yourself. You have to unlearn and relearn. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Now, Sometimes you see me talking with emotions because I can see the position of the scholars, what they are doing to you. You don't see it. I give an example. It's just like somebody who can see that an enemy is holding a gun trying to kill his loved ones. Are you telling me this, pe this person, me, I should stand there and keep quiet and, 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 and be, and be what, uh, caressing or romancing this person who is about to kill my loved ones and telling him, oh, you know what? Uh, don't do it this way. You, no, I can't. After you master my power, whatever I can master against this enemy, I have to do it. So when you see me talking with aggression against these hypocritical scholars, the mushriks, I do it with passion. I'm not scared of them. None of them can face me in a live dialogue. One, I will embarrass you. You mark it down. Any scholar who step forward won't lie. I will embarrass you. It's a fact. Unless if you are coming with humility to give the appraisal to God. Yes, then we can have it in a nice manner. Somebody says, Salif Ukwami says, in Islam, it's not obligation to change your name if your name is meaningful, okay. Uh, fine. You seem to have a point, but when you say it's not an obligation, it means like a law. It's not a law even. There's no notion of you have to change your name when you become a Muslim. It doesn't say anywhere. <laughs> uh -huh. So if you give me a condition and you say oh, in Islam it's not an obligation to change your name, if your name is meaningful, you are giving me a conditional clause. So there's no condition of even changing name anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I can give chance for one or two callers before I go. I have to go and help uh, with some stuffs being moved here so i can give a chance for one or two callers uh you can ask the questions before i leave yeah milan milan lion yes prophet muhammad was not circumcised there's no proof wherever whether in the garbage hadith books they don't have it where it says prophet muhammad was circumcised so why will he now tell people to even circumcise their kids whilst he himself was not circumcised <laughs> If they say he was circumcised, let them bring the evidence. Let's see <laughs> where Prophet Muhammad was circumcised. So why will you foolishly go circumcising your kids? 
just because some foolish doctrine is written somewhere in the garbage uh, uh, you know, books, and then you go and take it and put it on yourself, being mentally enslaved. Hmm? Uh, you said the circumcision started at the time of Abraham. Can you prove it from the Quran? Where the Quran says, because we are following the creed of Abraham, Milata Ibrahim, and everything about Ibrahim is found in the Quran. So can you, is it big, big body deen? Please, if you can prove to me right now in the Quran where it says Abraham was the first to start circumcision, wallahi, wallahi, page me, I'll pay you thousand euro. Just type the verse, the chapter and the verse in the Quran where it says Abraham was the first to start circumcision. Just prove to me. I'll pay you, okay? Mm -hmm. So my phone number is there for those on YouTube and Facebook. You can call before I end the program because I have to go to help the kids. Uh, Musaddiq Jibril says, Sheikh, from a scientific point of view, circumcision is good. Not, not all the time. It has the side effect also. They will not tell you. You, I give you the chance to research it. Just check the side effects of circumcision. I'm giving you the, the, the uh, authority also to check the side effect of circumcision. You read it for yourself. Don't just always sit there and say scientifically. The science, science, scientists have been telling you a lot of things which are full of garbages and trash. Right? It's not everything that science tells you which is good. The scientists are telling you to eat bugs, to eat cricket, and whatever have you. So you go ahead and start eating that, those ones too. <laughs> the same scientists were telling you weed is bad before. The same scientists will come back and say, now you can smoke weed. So be careful what scientists tell you. These same scientists are the ones telling you there's no God. So it is not everything scientists will tell you which is good. You have to filter it yourself. Like I said, this topic is about mental slavery. So you have to emancipate yourself from whatever you are being told, whether your politicians, your elders, whoever is telling you. You understand? Uh -huh. Mosaddiq Jibril say, so do you circumcise your No, I don't. Give me one reason why I should. Hey, Salam, Badiou. Give me one reason why I should. Did God command? The answer is no. The doctors didn't tell me my my kid, my son or daughter is sick. Why should I? Tell me. According to the Bible, Abraham was 99 years before he circumcised himself. So why not give your kids the chance to also grow and decide if they want to circumcise, right? Right? <laughs> if you allow the Bible to tell you that the, Abraham was 99 years before he circumcised himself, and his son Ishmael was 13 years before he circumcised himself, why will you do it to your kids while they are, they are toddlers? Why not also wait for them to be 13 and 99? <laughs> Mal says, Baba, why are people against making a picture or a representation of our prophet? I'm sure there are descriptions of him. I'm asking why people are so against even knowing what our prophet looked like. The point is, there are, there are misconceptions about what the prophet looked like. In some Hadith books, they say he's a white man. In some Hadith books, they say his mother is a black woman, right? And when a kid, mostly when a kid, his mother is black, it hardly has to be a white kid. Because according to some Hadith books, they say the prophet is a white man. Yet the same Hadith people are saying his mother was a black woman. So how come this kid is a white guy? There's a problem. Because when a mix, uh, a mother and a father who have different colors give birth to a, a, ch a child, the child doesn't become white again. The color must change, right? Uh -huh. So they say in their Hadith books, I'll try to make a lecture where I, I bring those proofs. I have it on my, uh, my laptop. I'll bring those proofs up. People can see the misconceptions and play their own scholars' videos, right? Uh -huh. Oh, Bambi, I think you have a platform. If you want people to listen to you also, you can go to your platform and then organize a, pl a program, right? And then invite whoever you want to invite. Deep says you are contradicting yourself. Yes, fools and mushriks always think I'm contradicting myself, especially people with low IQ. They think I'm contradicting myself. I, so I agree if you say I agree. Uh, for some people who have low IQ, yes, to them I'm contradicting. Big Body Dean says, why wouldn't you accept me to come online and discuss? Because I don't have time. I
You see, somebody says, I have questions for you. Well, you can type a question. I have time I can answer. Both Muslims and Christians are held by the Abrahamic covenant. Oh, really? Is that so? Prove it. Oh, so I'm not wise. Well, if you think you are not wise, that's up to you. I said I'm here to enlighten wise people. That's all I said. So if you say you are not wise, that's up to you. <laughs> oh, my God. What is wrong with people? Uh, <laughs> Husband Allah, when you were kid. When you read the Quran, the Quran says it's talking to intelligent people, people who are wise. So if you think you are a fool when you are reading the Quran, that's up to you. <laughs> I never called you fool. Or did, 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 did I say you are a wise? I say I'm here to enlighten, to lecture wise people. And you are saying I'm, I'm saying you are not wise. Where did I see that? Okay. Uh right. salam, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother Shaq. I can hear you. Yeah, please. I have a question on this intercession, this thing there. Uh huh. Uh, Quran, Quran chapter 2, verse 254 says something about the intercession. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, in the verse says, before a day comes, mm -hmm. wherein there is no transaction, no fellowship, no, interse no intercession. Yeah. But you go for you go for a Quran chapter 2 verse 255 mm -hmm. the true verse it goes on to tell you something like this uh intercession with the permission of god i don't know if i'm the one not understanding the the verses or is actually what it says in the verse yeah surah to bakara when you read uh quran chapter 2 verse 255 it says okay. uh he says who is there that can intercede in front of him if not for his permission or without his permission it's a question okay in arabic when they use the word man man the word man is a question brothers you understand okay aha uh -huh. who who is there there is nobody there who can intercede throughout the quran to simplify this answer to you throughout the quran when you go to quran chapter 6 verse 51 god says and won by it those who fear that they will be assembled before their lord they have no guardian nor intercessor besides him okay you understand he says what answer be lazina yakhafuna an yusharu ila rabbihim laysa lahum min dunihi waliyun wala shafiun la allahum yattaqun do you see so there is okay. no intercessor or guardian besides him and then last but the least when you go also to quran chapter yeah when you go to surah to uh is it and i go to verse, okay. verse 43 surah to zuma okay. yes i think surah to zuma uh, verse 43 to verse 44 now God says to him belongs all intercession altogether. You understand? The intercession okay. which will happen to him belongs altogether the intercession. So if to God belongs all the intercession, who else is going to intercede? Understood. God is asking, or do they have intercessors besides God? God asks a question. Then God says, Say, what if they do not possess anything, nor do they reason? Verse 44. Kul lillahi shafa'atun jami'an lahum mulku samawati wal ard thumma ilayhi turja'un. Say, to God belongs the intercession entirely. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. That's to him you will be returned. So intercession will not be given to anybody else to intercede okay. in order for somebody to be saved. Nobody will be saved unless by your achievement. Quran chapter 39 verse 61. Okay. Yes. Well, if, there is, if you would permit me, I have another question. Your last question, because I have to go. Oh, okay. Uh, in Northern Ghana here, me, I live in Northern Ghana. It's very common for your yes, to see malams who do fortune telling, like divination. I don't know. I've done some research and I've seen that priests is in the pre-Islamic era there was something like uh, Hatwa Ramal, 
where they will do the sand cutting to predict the future and predict rainfall. So I wanted to know if it's allowed in Islam or if there is any uh, Quranic backing on it. Uh, for, for for the fortune telling, are you saying? Yes. yes, now, yes. Anything, anything about fortune telling, we classify it under divination arrows. You go to Quran chapter 5, oh. verse 90 to 91, it is not encouraged by God. And God is asking us to okay. refrain from such. Okay. However, there is something okay. we call clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is a gift given to a person who you don't have to pay before anything. He can just see you and tell you some things which are coming on your way. That's clever. Okay. They see things you cannot perceive with your eyes. And it's mentioned in, okay. in Quran chapter 29, verse 38. I think Mustabsirin. Mustabsirin are people who can see things that you cannot see. So they will tell you okay. such things without you coming to inquire anything and say, oh, I want to pay you. You have to buy chicken, bring this, bring blood. Bring... No, 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 no. You understand okay. uh -huh. so okay. that is one thing that you ha we have to be cautious of like people okay. who will ask you for money and tell you bring this bring that for me to check fortune telling that is dangerous that is not the way of god okay yeah Thank so you for example for i give you the last example for example when the two prisoners come to joseph in the prison and then they they had okay. a dream you see they came to him in order to explain the dream there is no payment there is okay. no agreement of bring this bring that he had the gift okay. and he was able to tell them what will happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Thank you. So very thank nice. you very much for your time. Uh, I have to go now. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I have to go now. My time is up. I appreciate the time and support. Inshallah, I arrange an, another program uh, in the coming week so that we move on with this. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I have to go. I really, really have to go. Uh, let me see. I, I take. Uh, 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 Waalaikum salam, brother. Uh, brother, you, just one question before I go. Can you ask just one question because my time is up. I really, really have to go. Yeah, yes, no problem. The question to enlighten the viewers is Muhammad Sallallahu when he said Muhammad Rasulullah, was he talking about himself or was he talking about like when Allah said Muhammad Rasulullah and that's it? Yeah, it's a message. In, uh, Muhammad Rasulullah, for instance, Quran chapter 48, verse 29, where he says Muhammad Rasulullah, it is not the, the, the own statement coming from Muhammad. It is a message he has been given to deliver. It's a book. It's a message to mankind. Mm -hmm. So he, the mm -hmm. Muhammad Rasulullah, is a replication of what he has to deliver. It's not him giving his own, you know, statement. So he knows it's him, not somebody else. Yeah, it is him. Of course, the Quran, if you see the way the Quran is talking most of the time, for instance, Surah Al-Ikhlas, mm -hmm. You see, it starts with Kul, who Allah I had. Now, yes. he the messenger, he delivered the Quran. But that statement, Kul, who Allah I had, if it's a statement coming from him personally, he wouldn't write it in that way. Yes, you yes, understand? Yes, uh -huh. yes. So it's a command from God, and that is the way the book has to be del delivered to the people. So that is why it is because hard. It, yeah? Because when Surah goes, I don't know the best, I think it's Ghafir, mm -hmm. when that person is arguing with Pharaoh, when he says, before it came up, person a uh, yusuf to you and you said after yusuf there will be no messenger mm -hmm. so when in hadith in jibrail in bukhari mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when they say that gabriel came to muhammad sat mm -hmm. by him and he said tell me what is islam and he said islam is anta shadu la ila illa la wa anta shadu na muhammad rasulullah so he's saying i am the messenger he should have said that oh that's why i'm getting this yeah but th that statement is coming from the hadith that is not the quranic concept that statement you just mentioned mm -hmm. last one that the jibril came to him and he has to see a shadow no it is not a, a quranic concept that is a foreign concept from the hadith huh not not encouraged oh. by god so our message is muhammad it is muhammad in the quran it says that he is a messenger Said he says oh, clearly, yeah. Muhammad Rasulullah for chapter 48, verse 29, and also Quran chapter 33, verse 40. Ma kena Muhammadun Abba Adin Miri Jalikum, Walaki Rasulullah Layu Khatam and Nabi. Hello, yes, Hello. thank you very much, brother. I have to go now. I really have to go. My family, thank you for your call and for your time. <coughs> Salam alaikum. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Inshallah, we keep in touch next week. I will arrange another program. For those who were not here before, you can re-watch this video on Facebook and YouTube. Just on TikTok, see you again, inshallah, another time. And like I said, I'm available. For those who want to find my videos regularly, you find me on Facebook and YouTube. Check on my profile page. You see my link to Instagram and my YouTube where you can find me. 
It's all about enlightening the people to follow the truth and think outside the box. Let's avoid me being mentally enslaved. Question everything around you. Don't just be a slave. Subhana Rabbi Izzati Amma Yisifun wa salamu alayhi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi wa Thank you very much. Peace be upon you all. Thank you. Salamu alaykum.